A lot of talk this year has been about the new generation of Formula One cars and most of the talk in terms of, you know, some of the things that happen with the cars is porpoising. Porpoising, when the cars bounce a lot, I think it's like something to do with the change of downforce, increase, decrease, something like that. There's a massive change of downforce which causes the car to bounce more than usual. Drivers feel it, that's when you see the in-car camera, they're doing like that. Uh, so yeah, it causes the cars to bounce pretty violently, and uh, yeah, some teams are affected more by it, some teams are affected less, while well, the FIA has stepped in after last week's race to make some changes, to basically say, don't let your car do that. Let's see what they said. Following the eighth round of this year's FIA Formula One World Championship, during which the phenomenon of aerodynamic oscillations, or porpoising, of the new generation of Formula One cars and the effect of this during and after the race on the physical condition of the drivers was once again visible, the FIA, as the governing body of the sport, has decided that, in the interest of the safety, it is necessary to intervene to require that the teams make the necessary adjustments to reduce or to eliminate this phenomenon. So yeah, uh, they're getting rid of porpoising. Obviously, we saw last week Lewis Hamilton after the race when he was getting out of his car he was in visible pain and you know he had talked about during the race how his back was hurting and some drivers earlier in the season and even up to now have complained about potential long-term effects from the porpoising because the vertical g's uh when you're in the car when you're doing all that bouncing going so fast the change of downforce so much um they've complained that it could potentially lead to long-term problems in their lifetime with their backs which obviously they don't want so they were wanting some changes and you know, we can, if it was every single team being affected by this and there was no like outright solution, I would say, yeah, FIA's got to do something like, but you know, it has to be, every team has to change something, but we have seen that it has not affected every team. The teams that are most talked about in terms of the porpoising are Mercedes and Ferrari. Mercedes has had the problem all year. Uh, they've, everywhere they've gone and you know it was pretty bad at Baku. Baku has a pretty rough surface a pretty bumpy surface as is and the porpoising did not help especially down that long front straight so uh, they already were having a big problems with it. Ferrari has problems with it but they're still able to be really fast with it they're able to kind of work around it but the teams that really haven't had problems with it one of them is the current top team Red Bull uh, they're leading the drivers and constructors championships. They're the fastest team during the race usually. And they have had minimal problems with the porpoising. Alpine hasn't had too many problems with it, but other teams have had problems. So that's why the FIA is going to make teams change it if they can't get it down a bit. Um, you know, that's why they're not going to say every team has to change this on the car. Every team has to adjust this. They're saying it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. If your car is not to the standard or if it's having too much bounciness, we're going to make you change because it would be unfair, really, if they were to say everyone has to change everything because there are teams like Red Bull and Alpine who have figured out how to get rid of this porpoising and for Red Bull's case to maintain top speed, be one of the fastest cars on the track. So it would be really unfair to them and the other teams that have solved this problem to tell every team to change something. So that's why it's going to be kind of an individual case. Other things they said, um, a technical directive has been issued to give guidance to the teams about the measures the FIA intends to take to tackle the problem. These include closer scrutiny of the planks and skids, both in terms of their design and the observed wear, uh, the, de the definition of a metric based on the car's vertical acceleration that will give a quant quantitative limit for acceptable level of vertical oscillations. Uh, the exact mathematical formula for this metric is still being analyzed by the FIA and the Formula One teams have been invited to contribute to this process. In addition to these short-term measures, the FIA will convene a technical meeting with the teams in order to define measures that will reduce the propensity of the cars to exhibit such phenom phenomena, phenomen that word, in the medium term, the FIA has decided to intervene following consultation with its doctors in the interest of the safety of the drivers in a sport where the competitors are routinely driving at speeds in excess of 300 kilometers an hour 
It is considered that all of a driver's concentration needs to be focused on that task and that excessive fatigue or pain experienced by a driver could have significant consequences that should it result in a loss of concentration. In addition, the FIA has concerns in relation to the immediate physical impact on the health of the drivers, a number of whom have reported back pain following recent events. So, yeah, as I said earlier, last week we saw Lewis Hamilton getting out of the car, you know, holding his back a bit. He was talking about it during the race on the radio, and uh, other drivers have had issues with it. So, obviously, the short term, you know, bouncing up and down with all those Gs, and you go in so fast in that car, and, you know, in the tight cockpit, you know, that's going to be a lot of pressure on your back that's going to hurt you. And obviously, you know, you don't want to risk your top drivers or, you know, these are some of the best drivers in the world. You don't want to risk them getting hurt uh, at, in any way, shape or form, but, you know, just from driving down a straight. Uh, so they want to do anything they can to bump up the safety measures in Formula One to keep the cars as safe as possible, uh, to prevent as many injuries as possible whether it be like a right now, you know, or w whether it be long term, you want the health of your drivers. I don't know if it could potentially like hurt the head, you know, you're bouncing up so much, you know, the helmet's kind of your head's kind of jiggling around the helmet, you might hit the back of your seat head thingy. If it's like concussion issues, head CT, anything like that could be a problem. But uh, yeah, basically, this is a safety measure. It's not to you know, go at one team to try to bring down one team or to elevate another. It's for the safety of the drivers. So basically, you porpoise too much, you bounce too much, fix the problem. Uh, but I think my opinion is that it's a good call. Just because, you know, it is causing some drivers physical pain. And uh, as I think it was Carlos Sainz who said, you know, this is a new car. We don't know everything about it yet. And, you know, us drivers, we may be fine now, but we don't know how we're going to be in 20 years. And we'd rather not be on walkers in 20 years, you know, when they're 40, 50 years old. So, um, you know, I think in terms of safety, I think it's a really good call. Uh, it'll be interesting to see which teams it affects the most. As I said, some of the teams like Mercedes, Ferrari have been affected by it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens if they have to raise the ride height of the car, how much time they lose due to that. But... Uh, we'll see this week. Canada, this week, another bumpy track. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. So looking forward to it. I will do a v maybe do a video on that on Sunday. I made a com community post basically explaining that this weekend, it's, it's a bit hectic for me. We got a lot going on here. There's a family event, so I'm going to be occupied almost the whole weekend. Um, but I'm going to try to sneak off and watch the race on Sunday and do a video on it. But Saturday, nothing. Like, I'm probably not going to watch qualifying. I'm prob I'm definitely not making a video, so just be kind of aware that this weekend's going to be hectic. I'm not going to have much content up unless there's, like, the biggest breaking news ever, okay? Like, in Martin in NASCAR, Martin Truex Jr. announced he's retiring. I'll, f I'll find 30 minutes to do something. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, share. Uh, with your Formula One friends, your racing fans. We talk about racing all the time on here, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, potentially Sunday.